Yeah, I know, this took a bit to get up, and if you think that's disappointing, just wait till you find out I don't have that much to actually say. Uh, the fact of the matter is, along with being suddenly busy with stuff to actually review again, I kept going back and forth on whether or not this should be a big picture or a review, since they're only halfway through with the thing, and then when I decided to just do this because people were still bitching about it for stupid reasons, and there was a cliffhanger anyway, I wasn't super satisfied with how the actual script turned out, so yeah, we delayed and ran multiple reviews instead, because those are actually tend to be more affected by how timely they come out, and I've been thinking more recently about whether or not it'd be better to get the channel off the set schedule and put out more content on a when it's ready basis than have things pushed around and get delayed while trying to slot big picture into a Tuesday schedule that gets missed here and there anyway. Though I feel like I should actually post some of the more experimental content again as it gets put together before officially committing to that or even asking how you and the audience feel about it, though naturally now that I've brought it up I imagine people are gonna let me know. Get on with it! Yes! Get on with it! Get on with it! Get on with it. <laughs> Those who know me likely already know that there are a few things I was bigger into as a small child than Masters of the Universe, a thoroughly nonsensical line of action figures premised around mapping any random assortment of colors, shapes, weapons, and general genre themes onto the same vaguely Frank Frazetta-esque muscular body molds and declaring half of them good and half of them evil, an animated series from Filmation wherein pretty decent background paintings and pretty affordable animation laid out two seasons worth of strictly episodic quote-unquote story to provide what passed for context as to why good guy He-Man needed to endlessly battle bad guy Skeletor over control of Castle Grayskull, and that was it. It was Conan, crossed with Star Wars, mixed into a beefier, dumber version of Flash Gordon and John Carter of Mars, so basically it was f***ing awesome. Yeah, He-Man had a magic sword and rode on a giant green tiger, Skeletor was a skeleton with a wizard staff, there were monsters and punching and vehicles, and then instead of a third season, they did a show about He-Man's sister called She-Ra that was like the same show, but with all women and a pastel color scheme now, and you knew it was supposed to be for girls, but you watched it anyway, and you didn't really figure out why you didn't mind until a few years later, and then you were like, oh, right, okay. Big ass titties! So fast forward a bunch of years later, and there have been a few attempts at rebooting this, none of which have been particularly successful or popular until Mattel started making the action figures again, and then making expensive limited edition version of the action figures, and realized this was really the only thing they ever actually needed to do again, because the problem with this whole franchise, and its fan base, which I guess I qualify as part of when it came to the idea of a narrative for it, is that Masters of the Universe never really had a single coherent story, a myth mythos unto itself that anyone was trying to recapture or go deeper into than some nostalgic sense memory of wanting to own and either getting or not getting a specific He-Man toy, and that's going to differ wildly from person to person. The closest it got was the cartoon, and while people to varying degrees can appreciate it in a retro fun way, no one can really pretend it was even one of the better actual versions of a toy commercial show, and even the fans who were theoretically insistent that there was something actually of merit to be made from the He-Man lore, which, okay, I'll go with that, will usually tell you they're thinking something more like a live-action or upgrade-to-moving animation version of those extremely cool Earl Norum paintings that they use for so much of the merchandising art. Hell, even just a cartoon with better animation and writing where the characters actually got to do some violence and use their swords as swords would probably have been just fine. So when Netflix said, hey, we're gonna do a revival of the original cartoon and we're turning the reins over to Kevin Smith, the patron saint of Generation X Arrested Development, you'd think that would have made everyone who could possibly care perfectly content. At the very least, it'd look cool and there'd be some decent dialogue. Unfortunately, what happened around the same time is that Mattel and Netflix also put out Noelle Stevenson's She-Ra reboot, which committed the three unforgivable sins of being unapologetically modernized in its sensibilities, leaning extremely hard into the diversity of identity and character and audience that modernity entailed, and because they did a damn good job of the whole production, that's still probably the best thing that's ever been made narratively out of the Masters of the Universe franchise, being a huge success with audiences and critics, which had the alternative effect of demonstrating to the YouTube performative outrage industrial complex that grown-ass men being comically angry about the specter of social justice issues in f***ing He-Man cartoons was a new thing they could add to the Just Bringing It Up Makes Us Money toolkit alongside the existence of women in Star Wars and black people in comic books. And when Kevin Smith said, yeah, so in the new series we're going to give Tila, the main female character from the original show, more to actually do, these same guys all saw dollar signs and started chumming their own water to make sure no matter what was actually delivered they could make internet bank off it. So imagine how thrilled they must have been, and let's be fair here, the fact that the worst people in nerd culture are now furious with him
him as a gigantic win state for Kevin Smith, whose third wind career rejuvenation has now at least in part taken the form of being the early 2000s nerd god who did not turn out to be a predator when Masters of the Universe Revelations dropped and in its debut episode unveiled the big twist of at least the first half of its storyline, Tila is actually the main audience POV character after both He-Man and Skeletor are seemingly killed off, though obviously not for good because cartoon, in the first episodes, with the series then becoming a quest narrative as the various supporting characters from the good and bad guy teams have to step up and do a treasure hunt for magical relics to shove the world back into order because blah blah, dark side, light side, universe out of sync, cosmic balance, whatever. It's a plot reason for them to go to different places than usual and use characters like Scareglow, Hero, Wondar, and the Preternia stuff that never made it into the series. In any case, if I was pretending not to understand that the baby men are performing outrage for the attention economy, the idea would be that they're supposedly big mad because they claim they got tricked into watching a show about a woman doing adventure stuff because He-Man appears to be gone for a couple episodes. It should not be that much of a surprise to you that they figure out a way for him to be back in the cast and then probably back around almost immediately, but hey, who knows if it'll stick, I guess. In which case, I'd have to ask if they actually watched the series this is a sequel to to begin with, because apart from not being actually all that good, one of the other things any original He-Man cartoon fan should be able to tell you is that the handful of times the show was ever actually good on the story side were the episodes where they found an excuse to sideline the He-Man parts, you know, for a little while, because his power set means he always wins right away and it's hard to write a decent story around that, which is why the best episode was that one where Skeletor tricks him into thinking he accidentally hurt somebody and he doesn't want to do the He-Man thing anymore for a while, and the handful of episodes about Tila's yet unresolved backstory, i.e. she doesn't know the sorceress was her mother and we don't technically know if Man-at-Arms is her biological father or not, which is also the only unresolved plot thread from the show, because instead of a season 3 they did She-Ra instead and Revelation seems to ignore that part of the timeline, maybe leaving room for it to sync up with the other She-Ra Netflix show at some point, who knows. But otherwise, yeah, the main hero is overpowered, so take him and the bad guy off the board until the end and let the other dozens of characters do stuff, including that one person whose story you never finished, is kind of the easiest and smartest decision you could make for this franchise. You get a better story, you front face more stuff, and you save the big guns for the end. And in terms of the execution, it's still wall-to-wall fan service that somehow still has a decent script to it. You get He-Man being awesome, Battle Cat being awesome, Skeletor being awesome, Moss Man showed up, Man at Arms got to own the hell out of everybody, Orko got to do stuff. How are you complaining about this? I mean, I know the answer, but it's just so pathetic and sad. Which is why it's even hard to even try to build an episode out of this, if I'm being honest. Nothing was actually going on here. Certain people decided to be mad about this before it came out. They retrofitted what they eventually got into a predetermined sense of what they thought would get them a certain amount of outrage-driven traffic, and people still fell into line behind it. It's the dumbest possible version of the dumbest possible reaction to what should have been, and as far as I am concerned, still is, in terms of executions, one of the easiest layup wins in nostalgia repackaging history, and everyone involved in propagating it should be embarrassed. And I say that as someone who understands and fully agrees that there is a middle ground to walk in terms of being a sincere fan of something like Masters of the Universe as a grown-ass adult and not having it be in itself inherently embarrassing. I mean, you want to collect expensive versions of 80s action figures as a grown-up? Cool, and not in itself embarrassing. But this shit absolutely is, so congratulations on having lived down to the stereotype. I'm Bob, and that's the big picture. <laughs>